So as my last video said, I picked up the Lenovo C940. Uh, I got it about December 18th, the day I made that last video. And I've been using it ever since. Now the last video was really hastily thrown together. I didn't have much time for anything, but I wanted to get it put out there just to show kind of why I was upgrading and what my thought processes were behind getting this particular device. Now that I've had this device for a bit of time, what are my thoughts on it? Let's take a look. All right, so the C940 is a pretty good device. I have been very pleased with it for the, I wanna say two weeks that I've now been using it, and I really have no major complaints with the device itself. The hardware is good. I picked most of it myself. I went with the Core i5, um, and then I went with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. Everything else is pretty much standard. I went with the 1080p display because at 14 inches, 4K is just a drain on the battery life. Yeah, you would probably see a bit of the improvement, but it's not really worth the $300 price tag in my opinion. The AC wireless is fine. The AN, that option was there, was a bit too expensive. So I, I didn't go for any of the major bells or whistles. Um, but overall, I've been very pleased with this device. One of the main features of it is the sound bar here. And then the kind of subwoofers that come down here. This is mostly cooling, but um, it really does create quite a deep, rich sound, which for watching even basic YouTube videos, you definitely notice the difference. Now the Surface Pro Gen 1 had pretty good speakers. You could crank those all the way up. They weren't super loud, but they didn't exactly have poor quality to them. They weren't as deep and as rich, but I never really had any issues with clipping or static or fuzz or any distortion in the audio whatsoever. But these, I'm usually running the audio pretty low at about 16 to 18 in the Windows level, uh, setting level, 16 to 18% on average. Um, and I have just as much sound as I did out of the Surface at 40%. So it's a huge difference in output quality just because there's a lot more oomph behind what's in there. So audio quality is really good. I haven't really messed with the pen that much. It's very responsive in the little I've done with it. It really hasn't been the focus. Again, my major complaint is just the size. It's not terrible when I hold it normally, but you can see there it's again just really short. So if I turn it over, then the edges of where the locking and charging areas go kind of butt into my hand and get a little annoying. But if I rotate it over to where the buttons are kind of more on my thumb, then it slides nicely in and out of the crevice in my hand, and it's really not a problem to use that much. But again, it's not really the reason I purchased this. It's just something I thought was nice to have and will probably use a little bit once in a while. Now, using it in laptop mode, there's a few things that are taking a little bit to get adjusted to. One, the chassis on the whole thing is solid metal construction, which is really nice. You can see there's really no flex in the body and there's just a tiny bit in the monitor just because of the size. It is again a dust magnet which bothers my OCD as I smash the microphone on my chest but hey that's okay. I love the touchpad. It's nice. It's big. You get plenty of travel out of it. The surfaces was just this tiny one inch minuscule thing that was really kind of worthless. You had to scroll across the three, four times to go across the screen. It wasn't very responsive. It wasn't very sensitive and pushing the button here often meant or trying to right click often meant you left clicked and it was just kind of all over the place on that regard. This has been great. It's sensitive. It's large and the buttons don't get confused. So I'm very pleased with this part. The keyboard is kind of a mixed bag for me. I think if you've seen most regular keyboards, the keys aren't really all that far apart. And here, overall, they, they seem a bit far apart. It's not really that they're super far apart because often the keys kind of spread out. So they start with a small top and then they kind of spread out to a larger base. But overall, I feel that the keys here are farther apart than what I'm normally used to on a keyboard. So I don't have small hands, I do have large ones, but I'm used to typing in a smaller ranged keyboard. So it takes just a little bit of getting adjusted to the spread out on the keys, but it's not really been a problem. The other benefit here is with some keyboards, they shrink some of these keys down to be a lot smaller than what you would typically find on normal keyboards. When that happens, 
that's really a problem. Here, they didn't do any of that, so it works well. And some of the other hotkeys have also been well thought out, like the standard F5 refresh or reload is still refresh reload as a default hotkey, so you don't have to function F5 to do something basic. So they've thought out a lot of this very well. The backlight on the keys is pretty good. It's surprisingly bright, but not so bright that it obtrudes. And then they have a nice timed fade out on it. So it fades out after a couple of seconds of not touching it, simply touch on the touchpad and it wakes the keyboard back up so you don't have to worry about fumbling for any of the keys. If you use the touchscreen, the keyboard does not illuminate. So it, it really was well thought out and it works really well. Travel distance is really not that far but there's enough resistance to it that you can push a little bit and then you kind of feel the membrane click down into place. So these are really actually pretty good keys for my level of typing. There's not a lot of resistance on there, but there's enough that if you're doing some typing, you, you can do a pretty decent amount on here without wearing your fingers out or having any issues. So I definitely like that. Arrow keys are a little bit funky, but again, this is a mobile device, so I'm not too concerned about the non-standard layout here. I don't really need a massive left and right arrow. I think having the standard format would have suited me a little better, but it's not a problem and it works really well. So keyboard's a big win. The touchpad is a big win. The size here is not that big of a deal because when you fold it into tablet mode, this part rests on your legs and um, the keys are kind of recessed into the frame. So they're kind of flush with the top here and it works really well. There's not any problems with brushing up against that. So very pleased with that. On the bottom of the device, we have the primary cooling system here, as well as a little bit on the uh, inside up there. But for the most part, the cooling is handled here. Now I've typically run this thing in conservation mode or lowest power option. And I've been very pleased with how well it still handles everything I throw at it. I haven't done any major serious gaming on it yet. The most I've done is a bit of Gris and a bit of Balloons Tower, D Tower Defense 5 because I got it for a dollar in the Steam Winter Sale. And uh, it performed fantastically well. When you get a massive amount of balloons, any computer will lag a little bit on there. But overall, it works perfectly fine, even in low power mode. A lot of people talked about the fans ramping up in this, and I think some of that is because Windows is doing its thing in the background, and as you hit a couple of cores, the default Lenovo profile will get pretty aggressive to keep things cool, but you can kind of override that if you want and keep it quiet or keep it cool. I've left it on where it was because in low power, it really doesn't bother me that much. It doesn't kick on, it's not that loud. It certainly does a much better job of keeping it cool than my Surface ever did. But the bottom is where my major complaint actually is. And that's these rubber feet. On the front, it's not a big deal because the front bezel kind of rotates and the side rotates out. But as you get to the back, it's flat. So there's no longer this nice rounded edge that goes around. You get a square flat side on this. And the problem with this, as you can see, there's not a lot of distance between this pad and the back of the laptop. So when I set it down, if I go to pick it up from the front, which is kind of natural, you immediately scrape it. I don't know if you can hear that, but the bottom of the metal scrapes on it. So if I set this on, say, the granite countertop, and then I go to grab it, these back metal corners are scrape. And just a tiny little bit of scraping, there's already some scratches on the edges there. And that cheeses me off because A, this was expensive. I can see a few here too from doing the same thing against the soundbar. So this back pad, in my opinion, needs to be taller because as hard as you try, you kind of have to lift it straight up. And because the back isn't beveled, you can't really get under there easily in order to do that. You have to grab it from the front, which causes the tip, and then you really have to just pick it up and then grab it if you want to avoid scuffing anything on the back. Now you can kind of grab it from the back of the soundbar and pull it towards the front, which works, but mm, it, it, it's kind of an anal problem, but it's, it seems like a basic design issue that this pad's just not tall enough. The one on the front is fine. The one in the back needs to be a little taller so that you can lift it off, or they should have designed this back a little differently. But that's my only real complaint from the frame and the overall exterior portion of it. Now the other part I like is here on top of the monitor, you can see it's kind of flat right here, which allows you to stand it up very nicely 
and it rests very smoothly on the top there. You still get your sound coming out the top, you get the subwoofers blasting towards you, and then you have a great surface here to play games on. So I hooked up my Xbox uh, 360 wireless controller, played a few minutes of Gris on this, and it worked fantastically. I was very pleased with the experience overall. So that mode is great. When you flip it down into full tablet mode, the device has great screen coverage. There are small bezels on it, um, but that's not really an issue if, if you're holding it normally or doing it. I don't use this as much in tablet mode as I used my Surface, and that's fine. Um, I knew that going into this because I do enough typing on it now that having a proper keyboard is more important to me, but using it in tablet mode is a good experience if you forget about Windows. Windows is what kills that experience and maybe I'll talk about that separately down the road. But for now, the two-in-one functions on this are fantastic and I am extremely pleased with the overall look, design, build quality, functionality of it. It's built really well. It feels like a premium device. It costs a premium amount, but overall this is a fantastic device from the outside. So I'm very happy with it from my first few weeks of use. And I'm going to keep using it. I'm going to keep doing some other tests on it. I'll test more power hungry applications. I'll test some other aspects to it. But so far, there's no complaints on my side. I couldn't be happier with the purchase other than that one foible there and Windows 10, which whatever, that's a separate story. Battery life. I'm not going to do a crazy battery test. Again, I leave everything in conservation mode. When I talk about the software in a separate video, the Lenovo software has a uh, conservation mode that limits the full charge to 60% so that you don't run the risk of wearing out your battery. Yeah, it eats into your battery life a little bit, but uh, when I had a full charge on this thing, I completed all of Windows 10 setup, first boot, removing some of the bloatware, installing some of the basic applications, downloading a couple games. I used it for about three solid hours just downloading everything. Then I put it into the safe mode, uh, conservation mode, and then I used it for about another three and a half, four hours before I needed to charge it. So I'm getting a good seven to nine-ish hours out of very light YouTube videos. If I do a bit of light gaming, then I'm getting about six to seven hours of um, full time in conservation. So that's not too bad. If I do anything major on it, then I'm expecting to see about four to five hours of usage on it. But I'm, again, I bought this to be portable and to be able to do a lot of things. And I think it's going to definitely last the distance. Um, I just wanted to do kind of a quick update video to give you guys my initial thoughts and impressions after my first two weeks with using the device. I need to do some more playing with the stylus, um, see how that works out. I need to do a bit more serious gaming on it. I need to see how loud the fans ramp up to when I'm in a more serious mode and I'm using the CPU to its more, more of its full potential. And I'd like to see how the battery performs in that. I'm not gonna do any benchmarking. I'm not gonna do any drain tests on the battery again. I usually leave it in conservation mode and do what I need within that mode because it seems to handle everything that it needs to. Um, so in the next video, I wanna take a little bit more of a look into some of those aspects and some of the user experience within the software. Lenovo provided some software that was good and then immediately updated it into something I frankly think is crap now, which is really unfortunate. And then some of the issues that I have with Windows 10. Now I'm not gonna go too far into Windows 10 because that has nothing to do with this. That's a separate story, but the experience that that limits me to with this is what I wanted to highlight in that. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.